the racism actually became a bit less. What I mean is that several of the white soldiers, a lot of them had seen these segregated tank destroyers fight and they were impressed by the courage that they had displayed. Many of the white soldiers after the war actually praised the black tank destroyers for what they had done. Several of them had said like, we did not take the town, but they took the town. An excerpt from today's guest who's written an account of an all black tank destroyer unit in World War II, which was awarded the Presidential Unit Citation. Author Samuel de Corte is here, and I'll speak with him right after this break. I'm Robert Child, and this is Point of the Spear. I've just released a brand new documentary. You can watch online for free on Tubi, the streaming service from Fox. The show is called Weather and Warfare, Millennia to Modern Time. Weather and Warfare dramatically retraces the meteorological forces during battlefield engagements that doomed or saved civilizations. In 1588, more than half of the Spanish Armada on its way around northern Britain was destroyed by storms in retreat back to Spain. Napoleon's attack on Russia was stopped cold by winter weather, as was Hitler's siege of Leningrad. Just click on the link in this episode's description to watch on the web or download the app or watch on Roku for free. I hope you check it out. Welcome back. And before we get into the show, remember to click that follow button on the podcast to be notified of our future fantastic guests like the author we're speaking with today. And thank you. Today's guest is a graduate of Utrecht University, where he received an MA in Cultural History of Modern Europe. He wrote his thesis about the representation of black Americans during the Second World War in contemporary media, indicating that although they formed a substantial part of the American armed forces, they didn't receive an equal share in the representation. His book is called The 614th Tank Destroyer Battalion, Fighting on Both Fronts, and author Samuel de Corte joins us now. Samuel, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you, Robert. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be on your show. Oh, we're honored as well. And uh, this looks like a great book. And for our audience that does that may not know, what's the difference between the tank destroyer battalion in World War II and a, and a regular tank battalion? I'm assuming the audience is familiar with a uh, tank battalion. It's, say, you have a Sherman tank, M4 Sherman tank. Uh, you also had tank destroyer battalions, and they employed dedicated weapons, and they were used in a different way than the tank battalions. For instance, tank battalions could be used uh, against tanks, but they could also be used against uh, enemy infantry. Whereas the tank destroyers, the name gives it away, they were used uh, to destroy enemy tanks. Um, They were, for instance, not designed to take out enemy infantry. Um, For example, take the M10 tank destroyer. Um, It has a machine gun, but it's pointing towards the rear. It's used for anti-aircraft defense and it's not designed uh, to take on hostile infantry. Um, So whereas a tank battalion could be used against a multitude of threats, um, the tank destroyers were used against tanks only. Now, the War Department made a change when they established the tank destroyer battalions that increased in quality in the officer corps. What was that change? At the beginning of the 1990s, uh, the idea was that uh, black Americans were inferior to white Americans, um, and they were they had less opportunities to grow in the American army. And eventually, the War Department made a change, um, and they decided to employ African Americans in equal numbers to their um, to their proportion of society. Um, so around the time, around 10%, uh, more or less, of the American population consisted of Black Americans. And the idea was that um, in the army, one in 10 units would become a segregated unit. Um, the tank destroyers, they were established in 1941. And because they were a new branch uh, within the armed forces, the idea was that they would immediately start with, say, uh, creating one out of 10 uh, segregated battalions. I want to move on. There's a soldier that I wrote about in my book, Immortal Valor, 
Charles Thomas, who was an officer in the 614th. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what distinguished him and his unit? Of course. Okay. Um, Charles Thomas was a company commander in C Company of the 614th Tank Destroyer Battalion. And on 14 December 1944, after the 614 Tank Destroyer Battalion got attached to the 103rd Infantry Division, uh, a special task force was created. And the task force consisted of a reinforced infantry company, a platoon of tanks, a platoon of tank destroyers uh, from the C Company, third platoon to be specific, uh, as well as some other small attached units. And that um, the task force had, the mission of the task force was to seize the strategic town of Klimbach in France. The town was used to supply other towns in that area. And the idea was that the task force could easily take the town, but it turned out different. Instead of just going there and easily capturing the town, it turned out that it was well defended. As Charles Thomas um, in his vehicle rode over the hill towards that town, he was suddenly struck uh, by a mine as well as anti-tank fire. And the first thing he did was deploying his, and his tank destroyer, his, two of his tank destroyers. And they immediately went into action against the Germans that were in that town. What happens next is, well, a remarkable feature. And during the, at the time, the men were on a reverse slope. So the idea is that they were in a very exposed position. And not only did they deploy the guns and take on the Germans, but what happened is that they distracted the Germans for so long that the reinforced company moved around and could seize the town from another direction. Um, I believe that for around four to five hours, the men were in an exposed position engaging the Germans in the town. And of course, casualties started mounting rapidly. Um, I believe that around 50% of the platoon became a casualty. Three of the four guns were eventually put out of action, uh, but still they kept it up. I hope you're enjoying this episode. Next time we kick off November with the story of Churchill's World War II SAS Desperados with Sunday Times best-selling author Damian Lewis. You know, when we faced our darkest hour, when, you know, Europe had been defeated on all fronts, France had fallen, Belgium had fallen, Holland had fallen, most of Western Europe had just within weeks been steamrolled by the German Blitzkrieg. Even at that moment, Churchill said, we must not concentrate purely on our defences. That's why France fell. That's why most of Western Europe fell. Attack is the best form of defence, and we have to go back and take the war to the enemy. Another reason to click that follow button to be notified when the episode releases. And before we return to the conversation, if you're enjoying the story of black soldiers from World War II, check out our earlier program, Forgotten, the untold story of D-Day's black heroes, with author Linda Hervey. The one thing that stays with me about the story of these men is how the in every war, that our country has fought since the founding, since the Revolutionary War. Black soldiers have always stepped up. Slaves stepped up to fight, hoping that a show of bravery, a show of patriotism serving their country would help make things more equal after the war, would give them, their families, their people equal rights. And in every situation, that didn't happen. It's show 140 from season two, and you'll easily find it in our past episodes. He went on to receive the Medal of Honor, Charles Thomas, in 1997. True. And uh, there was an award that his unit received. Third platoon of C Company of the 614 Tank Destroyer Battalion is the first uh, segregated unit that won the Distinguished Unit Citation also known as the Presidential Unit Citation uh, these days. 
and they were the first segregated unit to win that award during the Second World War. Of course, several of the men were also awarded for their actions. Some of them received the Bronze Star, others received uh, the Silver Star. Uh, and Charles Thomas was decorated with the Distinguished Service Cross. Um, but after the war, an examination was made and he was awarded the Medal of Honor, as were six other men. And uh, can you speak a little bit on the racism his unit uh, endured during the war? Well, the interesting part is that um, the unit endured racism uh, before they deployed into combat, but uh, especially after Klimbach, um, it happened shortly after the unit became attached to the 103rd Infantry Division. Um, the racism actually became a bit less. Um, what I mean is that several of the white soldiers, uh, a lot of them had seen these segregated tank destroyers fight and they were impressed by, by the courage that they had displayed. And many of the white soldiers after the war actually praised the black tank destroyers for what they had done. Uh, several of them had said like, um, we did not take the town, but they took the town. Um, and due to the heroism they displayed, I think that several of the white soldiers changed their attitude towards black American soldiers. Um, of course, the difference was that when they came back, they came back in America and, well, not everyone knew about what they had done or what they had seen. Uh, for instance, there's one of the, I believe it was Lieutenant Christopher Sturkey, he returned after the war. Uh, he's a decorated veteran, he's an officer. Um, and he's waiting for his wife uh, to finish from work. And as he's waiting there, uh, he wants to get a hamburger at a restaurant. And the lady behind the counter, she tells him, we don't serve your kind here. And I think that's actually very, it's very horrible that he, after everything that he has experienced, everything that he's done, he returns home to this. Yeah, yeah, that, a lot of black soldiers encountered that in World War II. Mm -hmm. What drew you to the 614th? Obviously, you're not an American. You live in Europe. But what drew you to the 614th? Hey, I wrote my uh, graduate thesis about the representation of Black American soldiers in contemporary media. Although Black American soldiers formed around approximately 10% of the American armed forces, they don't receive 10% of the credit, so to say. They are not always featured in movies, or if they are featured in movies, they are a bit in the background as an extra. Yeah, and it was it was something that I identified in my thesis. And it's not only uh, in movies, but it's also, for instance, in literature or in certain history books. And it got me thinking, okay, I, I want to do more with this problem. I've identified this problem, and yeah, it, it stayed with me. So yeah, I wanted to... I wanted to contribute to the solution of the problem that I, I had identified, and I decided to start writing about this unit. I think it's a remarkable unit. It has a fascinating history. Of course, <laughs> uh, I wrote the book, but what I think is really wonderful is that this unit performed rather well throughout its entire history. And of course, it's not one of the most spectacular tank destroyer battalions that existed within the American Army but it does have a really fascinating history. It does, and the book is wonderful, and I encourage everyone to uh, go out and get it. The book is called The 614th Tank Destroyer Battalion, Fighting on Both Fronts. Samuel, thank you so much for being with us today. Of course, thank you. That's it for this episode. Thanks so much for joining me. Next time, we kick off November with the story of Churchill's World War II SAS Desperados with Sunday Times best-selling author, Damien Lewis. You know, when we faced our darkest hour, when, you know, Europe had been defeated on all fronts, France had fallen, Belgium had fallen, Holland had fallen, most of Western Europe had just, within weeks, been steamrolled by the German Blitzkrieg. Even at that moment, Churchill said, we must not concentrate purely on our defences. That's why France fell. That's why most of Western Europe fell. Attack is the best form of defence, and we have to go back and take the war to the enemy. Another reason to click that follow button to be notified when the episode releases. 
And if you like what you hear, leave a review or a rating or just click the follow button. And be sure to check out our Point of the Spear YouTube channel with bonus video material plus full military history documentaries. There's tons to explore, and I hope you check it out. I'm Robert Child, and this has been Point of the Spear. Music licensed from Audioblocks.com. Point of the Spear is produced by RSC Media Group.